Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to have an analysis video on the JG Maker Artist D. That's JG Maker's IDEX CR10 sized printer. So stay tuned. So this is a 310 by 310 by 350 millimeter build volume. You might want to increase that height 50 millimeters just so you can be 400 millimeters. I guess it's not that big a deal, but all you got to do is increase the height of these verticals and the lead screws. Not a huge deal, but would be nice to be 334. Um, one of the problems you're going to run into is you're using a 310 by 310 build volume on a printer that has a 310 by 310 bed. That means precision has to be really, really close, otherwise that nozzle ends up off the bed. I would suggest either making the bed five by five millimeters larger or in the firmware decreasing the build volume by five millimeters so that it's 305 by 305. This way you have a five millimeter tolerance on the outside edge of the build volume. So if this plate is installed slightly wrong, if something is slightly crooked, you don't end up printing off of your build volume. Um, that would be easy enough to do in firmware, cost you nothing. So make the build volume 305 by 305 by 350. The mag sheet needs a little work. First of all, excellent for including a mag sheet and excellent for including a normal surface instead of a PEI surface. I think it should be left for more advanced people. Um, this surface is just more forgiving for beginning users. Whatever adhesive you're using on this, it's no good because this just peels up. I, I haven't even done anything to it yet. It just peels up. <laughs> um, so whatever adhesive you're using on there it's no good you're going to want to improve that adhesive also on your aluminum plate here or a steel plate you have this little extra piece added but you have it on the top and the bottom and that's a big no-no I ripped that thing off right away uh, the problem is by having that piece here you must position this precisely onto the bed now the normal way we do that is we put our finger back here and we grab these two corners like that and we align that corner and then we drop the bed into place. The problem is you have to do that exactly because of that rubber piece you have on the bottom. If it's off, it's going to be lifting this bed up. And as you can see, it's pulling the sheet up off the bed when I lift it. That's because that adhesive isn't sticking. Just get rid of that rubber on the bottom. It is not necessary. And um, a better way of attaching this would be to have two of these tabs, one on each side. The reason for that is when you lift this up, you're lifting up the entire width of the sheet all at once, which means you're lifting up the maximum magnetic force all at once. And that's probably partially why it's peeling that off on the edges there. I can't even get it off using your method. It, it won't come off, it's peeling the bed off. So I have to peel it up from the corner, which means I'm pulling less of the magnetic surface apart and it makes it much easier. That's one of the reasons why these mag plates tend to have two tabs spread apart so that you're not fighting so much of the magnetic surface to get that tab off. You see, even when it's partially off like that, you can't really get it off. You have to um, get it by a corner. So, but otherwise, fantastic for including the magnetic steel plate. <coughs> it's the right way to go, it's the right direction to go. Um, get rid of the silver springs. Replace those silver springs with the yellow die compression springs. I don't like the silver springs. They don't have enough push. And they also tend to wobble. Uh, another issue that I had with the bed is that I need to lower this bed to make those springs tighter. Because if those springs are tighter, you get less drift in your bed leveling. The problem is the way you lower the bed is to lower the Z end stop. And I can't lower the Z end stop on this printer because you have a fixed point in the middle of the bed holding up the center of that bed so <laughs> because of that i can't adjust the z end stop because otherwise if i try to tighten up my four corners the whole bed is going to bow on that center point that you added instead of trying to patch a flawed bed surface with a pin in the middle use a thicker aluminum plate so add you know 50 percent 100 percent to the thickness of the aluminum plate yes it's going to cost a little more it's a $600 printer. Who cares? Add that extra dollar or two that it costs to 
use a thicker aluminum plate. The thicker aluminum plate will be more resistant to warping. Um, this might not exist in the final revision, but the this front fascia on the printer is miscut or the electrical board inside is misplaced because the knob does not line up with the hole cut into the face. So the knob pushes against the bottom edge of this. That's easy enough to fix. Either just make the hole bigger or align the board and or the cutout on the fascia more accurately. Not a huge deal. It's a small QC issue in the construction. Next up on the list, we took care of springs and bed thickness and bed size. Okay. You advertise this printer has silent drivers. And then you put four jet engine turbines on the heads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. They are jet turbines. This thing is anything but quiet. 50 feet away at the other end of my house, I can hear this printer. You don't have to use silent fans. You don't have to use Noctua's or noise blockers. All you need to use is good quality fans. Brushless dual ball bearing. You buy any good quality brushless dual ball bearing fan and it is virtually silent. You're not going to hear it. It's not once you walk away from the printer. So definitely need to do something with the fans. They are entirely too noisy. Take care of fans. Run out sensors. You have the run out sensors up here. They really need to be down here. Because if the filament breaks here, the run out sensor is not going to know. <laughs> so you really need to have that run out sensor down here. And the input for the run out sensor needs to have a little bit of PTFE going through it. The purpose of that is to prevent the angle of entry into the sensor from breaking the filament that's especially important for more delicate filament love the swappable nozzles you really need to go up to one millimeter so we need 0 0.6 0 0.8 and 1.0 millimeter as well as the 0.2 millimeter you were talking about i don't know if this printer actually has the resolution to do 0.2 millimeter effectively but uh, definitely one millimeter would come in very handy i've been forcing it to extrude 1.5 millimeter extrusions to make little tchotchkes for around the house and um, it really needs a one millimeter nozzle that would come in very handy for something like this, especially with the duplication mode. Um, uh, so we've got the nozzles, got the run out sensors, purge buckets. Um, two things for the purge buckets. One, uh, instead of screws for the purge buckets, include two more of those thumb screws. They're very handy and they fit on the purge buckets. I accidentally installed them on the purge buckets first before I realized I needed to swap them because I needed them for the filament holders. So switch out to thumb screws for the purge buckets. Also the metal frame here that the purge bucket attached to needs a detent to control where the purge bucket goes. Because the problem you run into is this purge bucket, if in the wrong position, will hit this junction box. This gantry comes down low enough for the purge bucket to drop below the level of this um, junction box you have here where you switch over from wires to ribbon and it impacts the junction box so the end user needs to be aware and you can't even put it flush with the end of the metal here it actually has to be in like five millimeters in order to make sure this purge bucket clears this junction box on homing so i would have this made with a detent so that they are forced to put this bucket in the correct position where it can't be put in the wrong position that's important or um make the purge bucket shorter the purge bucket does not need to be this big this purge bucket could be half this height and then you wouldn't have to worry about it impacting the junction box down below here so that takes care of thumb screws and position of purge buckets uh, filament release i'd like to see um a release for the filament so my instinct says i should be able to push this in but that doesn't do anything when i do that um, I would like to be able to press a button or push a lever for the the grip for the filament to release it so that I can freely push filament in or pull filament out. That would be nice to have. As it stands right now, I'm forced to either put a lot of pressure on this to force the stepper motor to turn or use the commands on the printer to do that. I'd like to be able to just walk up to the printer and go press, pull, press, push. It would make filament swapping a whole lot easier. It would make... Um, Changing filament a lot easier, pulling filament out, clearing fogs, etc. a lot easier. Um, that takes care of filament release. 
Uh, anything else? Um, I'm not a huge fan of the ribbon cables. They're kind of sketch, but you did do them correctly. You have proper sockets on the end of the ribbon cables, and the proper socket means your solder joints should be more consistent, more reliable. Some manufacturers are using the ribbons um, to make it cheaper. They have a surface mount socket that you place the ribbon into, and when those surface mount solder joints get a little eh, Sometimes the ribbons stop working. Yours do appear to be more reliable. Um, I understand why you did the ribbons, and it makes sense. I can't think of a solution around it, so stick with the ribbons. Just um, it'd be nice maybe to include a couple spare, um, and just you know make sure to warn the you end users to be careful with the ribbons. Don't manhandle them. Make sure the manual talks about being gentle with these ribbons and not being rough with them. Um, so let me see if I think of anything else. One thing I forgot to add, um, there's a problem with the way you have the cooling fans inside this box here. Uh, the duct down here, well, this came loose and was tilting sideways. I thought the duct had broken loose from the fan. Uh, that's why I took the head apart to fix that. It turns out the duct didn't come loose. You have two bolts holding the duct onto the fan and then you have a single point bolt holding the fan unit into this entire unit so when that bolt came loose the whole fan when that bolt came loose the whole fan and duct was able to tilt like that and it started to try to tear itself apart you know whenever we come off to the side to the purge bucket the shroud for the fan would hit that because it was tilting so it was sticking down further than it should. Uh, I tightened the bolt up. It's fine. It's staying put. I would like to see that redesigned a little bit. So there's two bolts there. This way, if one screw comes a tiny bit loose, you don't have that fan flopping in the wind down there. Otherwise, the fans work well so far. Something else to possibly consider is making this machine a multi-purpose machine. I noticed these heads are actually very easy to swap out. Remove these two screws and these two screws after disconnecting the ribble and put ribbon and pulling the filament and the whole head just drops out of this cage. The cage actually stays put and the head drops out. Um, make sure the manual tells people that's going to happen so they don't damage that. But um, I would maybe like to see thumb screws on here. So have tall thumb screws on here so that I don't even need tools to swap out this entire head. That'd be pretty darn cool. I'd like to see you sell spare print heads. So if an end user has a problem with a print head, all they gotta do is pull the ribbon filament, drop out the print head, pop in a replacement print head, and then they can continue printing and then they can sit that print head on their desk and repair it, do whatever they need to it without having downtime for the machine. So having spare print heads would be pretty darn handy. I don't know if it's possible to make the print heads unidirectional so that one print head will work on either side. I don't know if that's possible, if there's enough room in there. Um, you'll have to determine that. But in general, pretty darn cool. It looks like it might be, because I noticed the wires come out this side on that one, and they come out this side on this one, so it's very possible this might be reversible, but then these will be on the wrong side. So I have a feeling not. I have a feeling there's a left and a right. Um, you could also consider maybe different heads on the machine. So uh, this would be for very, very, very light duty work. We're talking, you know, basically just wood. But um, it'd be interesting to have, you know, a CNC head and a laser head and be able to conduct both operations in one set of G-code. So put a piece of wood down. Um, have it do some engraving in the wood and then have it do some lasering in the wood. That's something to think about for the future. IDEX heads might make that pretty interesting. Um, that's long-term thinking. Not something you're likely going to be able to retro to this machine, but something to think about for the future. I can I can see it being pretty handy to be able to both um, CNC and laser in one operation. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, beyond that, the machine is working well. It's not giving me any trouble. I did have one issue where the screen went to garbage. So I can actually show you that. 
I had adjusted the flow rate on a print and then the screen went to all garbage and I was unable to do anything. I just had to let it keep printing. It did that. That's probably just a firmware issue. I know the person, um, Sam, is working on the firmware with you. He's going to send me the latest copy of the firmware. Otherwise, I am blown away by the fact that an IDEX machine took no configuration setup on my part. Like, none. <laughs> I, didn't have to I didn't have to adjust offsets. I didn't have to tune anything. I simply told the machine, I, in Simplify 3D, I simply said, you know, tool zero, tool one, and tell it to do what I want it to do, and it simply works. I mean, no scripts, no coding, nothing. It just works. That's impressive. Um, I got the print out the little frog that I sliced up. I printed out a little King Marvin that I, sli that I sliced up. And then I have a little, another one here somewhere. I don't know where it's at. Doesn't matter. Um, you know, of course, a bunch of my own little parts I'm printing out. It's working well. It's not the highest resolution printer I've ever seen. There is an extrusion consistency issue where. I'm not getting even consistent extrusion. I can show you that on here. Let's see, the easiest way to show you would be to switch cameras to here. Now, don't mind the facets in this model. That's just because someone edited this model. And when they edit it, it got decimated. So that has nothing to do with the printer. But let me see if I can get this to focus. Come on. there see how some of the layers look like they're recessed and some of the layers bulge out that is a that's an extrusion inconsistency and i haven't quite figured out why it's doing that yet i want to do a couple of vase mode prints and see how they come out uh, these are bad examples because they are massively over extruded see no that doesn't look bad there but even there, you can see there's some inconsistency. See how right here, there's two lines that are slightly, they look like they're under-extruded slightly. And then you have a couple lines that look like they're slightly over-extruded. I don't think your Z-axis is binding, but it appears to be working very smoothly. I suspect it is something in the head. Something with the way it's gripping the filament where I'm not getting a consistent extrusion. Like uh, it'll it'll be commanded to extrude a millimeter of filament and it might only extrude 0.9 or it'll extrude 1.1. Well, I'm not getting a consistency there. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that. I'm still investigating it. Otherwise, the machine is working very, very well. Most people aren't even going to see that inconsistency unless there's someone like me who really pays attention to that. In general, the printer is working fantastically out of the box. Everything went together properly. I didn't have to tweak or adjust anything. I did have a missing screw, and I still have no idea where that screw goes. <laughs> a screw came out of the box, so it came out of the printer somewhere, but I can't find where it goes. <laughs> it's obviously not that important. It's working fine. I did not have to adjust any tension. I didn't have to adjust the heads or the IDEX system at all. I love the fact that I can go into them. I can just, you need more instructions on this. I'll create a simple instruction sheet if you guys don't already have one on how to use the IDEX menu on the printer. It's fantastic. Um, it would be nice to let people know what the physical constraints are. So for example, let's switch back to this view. For example, when you're doing duplication mode, these heads move together. So there's no restriction. You can print the 150 millimeters on the left and 150 millimeters on the right, and the heads will never impact because the heads move in unison. However, when you do mirror modes, the heads move in opposition to each other. Which means you cannot print to the center of the bed because the two heads will hit when you try to print to the center of the bed. So your offset is going to be whatever the distance is between these two nozzles. And you'll have to have that dead zone in the middle of the bed where you cannot print if you're using mirror mode. Because otherwise the heads will hit each other when they converge when printing the mirror mode. So on the outside, you don't have that problem because you have the dead space to move out of the print volume on the outside. But on the inside, you do have that problem. So whatever that distance is, the manual needs to spell out that dead zone in the middle. 
that's just minor instruction things. That's nothing wrong with the printer itself. Overall, it's working well. I have very few issues at all with the machine. Quality control seems pretty good, except for the adhesive on the magnetic bed. Hopefully that'll be fixed when you go into production. Uh, basically, it looks like you largely duplicated the CRX or CR Tennis Pro construction. You know, the solid frame, block in the middle. Looks very reminiscent of CR Tennis and CRX, which is fine. That works well. No complaints with that. Um, that's it. Thicker bed, better springs, better adhesive, no tab on the bottom. Tab on left and right, not in the center. Center is bad because you're fighting the entire magnetic bed to get the sheet off. So you want the tabs, you know, here and here. Look at the wham bam sheet, same idea. Um, I would like a release for the filament. Filament sensors should be down here on top of the heads. Otherwise, good job. The, the machine works well. And from what I understand, this is an early model of the machine that I got, and I had far less problems than I expected to. So you did a pretty decent job on that. I look forward to seeing what you end up producing. Anybody, if you have any questions down below, feel free to ask. I enjoy answering questions from my critters. You all have a great day.